In the shadows of Morkdor, the Dark Lord Sauron forged the One Ring to enslave all elves, dwarves, and men of Middle-earth. The free people of Middle-earth overthrew Sauron, but lost the ring. Now the enemy has returned, and from his dark tower in Morkdor, he seeks his ring. We must find the ring first, and destroy it. But who can bear to carry the ring? The weak would be corrupted. Precious. <laughs> Powerful would become as great a threat as Sauron. But who can bear the ring? Welcome back, Gandalf. Will we have fireworks, elvish lessons, tales of ancient Numenor? Today, we must talk about a shadow of the past. The ring you inherited may be very dangerous. Uncle Bilbo's magic ring? Magic rings, as you call them, were made by elves. But this ring, I think, was made by another. Give me the ring. No! Look closely. I see fine lines. Lines of fire in a flowing script. What does it say? One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, bind them. This is the one ring to rule them all. The ancient kings of elves, dwarves, and men Use the rings of power to rule their lands. The Dark Lord Sauron created this ring to rule all the others. When he fell in battle, he lost it. A strange creature called Gollum found the ring and was corrupted by it. Bilbo won it from Gollum, and now it is yours. But the Lord of the Rings has returned, and all his thought is bent on finding the ring. Let's destroy it! It can only be destroyed when it was forged. In Mount Doom, the Fire Mountain in Mordor. Take it there. Take it. No, do not tempt me. If I bore the ring, I would become like the Dark Lord himself. Then... then I must guard the ring. And I will help you bear this burden, as long as it is yours to bear. I'm a danger to the Shire. I must leave. No, I could set out on the road just like Bilbo. My dear Frodo, Hobbits really are amazing creatures. But you need not go alone, if there are any you can trust. But take care. The enemy has many spies. Well then, Samwise Gamgee, isn't it? Ah! Ah! Don't hurt me! What are you doing at Bag End? Nothing, sir. Trimming the grass under the window. Oh? The sound of shears stopped some time ago. How long have you been eavesdropping? Eavesdropping? Well, there ain't no eaves at Bag End. Don't be a fool. What have you heard? Oh, Frodo, don't let him turn me into anything unnatural. He won't hurt you. Just answer his question. Well, I heard a lot I didn't understand about lords and rings and a fiery mountain and elves, uh... I had to listen. I'd dearly love to see elves. Keep it a secret, Sam, or I hope Gandalf turns you into a spotted toad. I've thought of something better. He will go away with you, Frodo. Me, sir? Go and see elves and all? But where should we go? Towards danger, but not too rashly, nor too straight. And you mustn't vanish. Take time to settle your affairs before you leave. I could leave in autumn, on my birthday. Very well, but no later. Make for Rivendell in the east, and seek the counsel of Elrond Half-Elven. East? I'll tell everyone I'm buying a house in Crick Hollow near my relatives in Buckland. I'll have to sell Bag End. The Sackville Bagginses have been trying to take over this place for years. A shame to let them have it. 
indeed. And now I must go. I have much to attend to. See that Samwise Gamgee does not talk, or I will turn him into a spotted toad. You can trust Sam. Oh, yes! Not a word from Sam Gamgee. Once you leave, travel as Mr. Underhill. The name of Baggins is not safe outside the Shire. And do not use the ring, for it can corrupt the most innocent heart. I understand. Farewell, Gandalf. Elves? I'm going to see elves! Farewell, Frodo. I'll return by your birthday. locked. It's locked. But Gandalf did not come back, and as the nights grew longer, I decided I might have to leave without him. On the morning of my birthday, September 22nd, I set out for one final stroll around the Shire. I had to say farewell to my neighbors and sell my home to Lobelia Sackville Baggins. After that, I would collect the ring from Bag End and set out on the road in the evening.
Good morning to you, Mr. Frodo. Good morning, Sam. All ready to set out for Buckland? All ready. Or will be as soon as I attend to Bag End. Lobelia Sackville Baggins is buying the place. You don't need to weed Bag End ever again. I'd like to weed them Sackville Bagginses out of Bag End, if you take my meaning. No, I've got to weed that garden one last time, Frodo. Say my goodbyes to it. Set it to rights before Lotho and Lobelia ruin it. Bag End has the best garden in the Shire, thanks to your work. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sure there are many finer. Oh, Merry and Pippin asked you to meet them at the Green Dragon Inn. They took a long walk out here just for a drink. I wonder what mischief they're up to. Begging your pardon, sir, but there's little mischief to be found in the Green Dragon. The Keeper won't stand for it. We will see. Sam's home. Will he miss it as much as I shall bag end? I'm not so sure I should be doing this. I'm not so sure I should be doing... Hello there, Hal. Oh, hello, Frodo. You have a beautiful day to begin your trip to Crick Hollow. Yes, indeed. I'm too old for such long walks. I can't even climb high enough to fix my weather vane. What's wrong with it? The thing's stuck. Sorry to hear it. That rascal Sancho Proudfoot was throwing sticks at it. Now it won't turn at all. I'll take a look at it before I leave. Well, that'd be fine with me. The ladder's right over there. <laughs> Weather vane turns like it's new. Thank you kindly for that. My pleasure, Hal. You've helped an old man when others might not have, and I thank you for it. 
I must have something around here as a reward. Here, have some eggs, fresh today. Hello, Ted. I wanted to say goodbye before I... Can't you see I'm busy? Actually, no. You seem to be just standing about. Well, if you knew about mills, you'd know I'm trying to locate a very important metal pin that must have fallen out of my mill wheel. I looked high and low around the gearbox there behind the mill, and it was nowhere to be found. Is that why the mill isn't working? Oh, never you mind about working or not working. I've sent Mugwort to Bree for a replacement. I'll let you know if I see it. What does it look like? If I haven't found it yet, there's no way you can find it. But, uh, it looks like a plain metal pin. <clears throat> now, good day to you. So sure I should be doing this. Hello, Milo. Hey, no time to talk, Frodo. My pigs are loose. Oh, what happened? I don't know. I came to feed them and they were all over the pasture. Someone must have let them out of the pen. Why would anyone do that, I wonder? I don't know, but if they're not back in the pen before my wife gets home, I'm in big trouble. I see. Well, good luck. Wait. Wait, will you help me? Beg your pardon? Well, I was hoping to do some fishing with Fatty Bulger. I can't very well fish with my pigs running loose. There may be something I can do. Oh, I hope so.
The old tree house. It still stands. I played in it as a boy. These are some of Gandalf's fireworks. Some young scamp must have made off with them when he wasn't looking. Well, if it isn't the Mr. Frodo half a baggins himself, out for a stroll amongst the common folk. And hello to you as well, Lotho. Is your mother in Bywater? I need to speak with her. Mother? Yes, she's here. I believe she's at the Ivy Bush Inn, though I doubt she'll want to speak to the likes of you. Then you might be surprised. Good day, Lotho. Hmm. Looks like the clapper for the warning bell is missing. Hello, Lobelia. Where's the sheriff? Where's that lazy Robin Smallborough? I couldn't say. Now about Bag End. Never you mind all that. There are wolves in the Shire. I'm sure the sheriff is keeping everyone safe. How could he? I haven't told him about the wolves yet. Go away, Frodo. I need the sheriff. Just ring the warning bell. If he's anywhere in Bywater, he'll come running. Don't just hang about then. Ring the warning bell. Hello, Frodo. Hello, Angelica. We shall miss you terribly, Frodo. Indeed. You're going ever such a long way away, practically to the other end of the world. Just the other end of the Shire. It's so far to travel. I hope you can return to Hobbiton one day. So do I. Goodbye, Frodo. Goodbye, Angelica.
Hello, Frodo. Hello, Fatty. Doing some baking today? Yes, indeed. I have a bit of a wager with Robin Smallbro. He thinks I can't make a pie in an afternoon. Ha! Ah! I see. What kind of pies are you making? Well, I wanted to make an apple pie, but all of my apples have gone bad. Practically crawling with worms. Ugh, horrible. How dreadful. Isn't it? So, an apple pie was right out. Good thing I had plenty of pumpkins handy, eh? Indeed it was. Keep it to yourself, Frodo, but I played a bit of a prank on old Smallbro. Used his precious bell clapper to grind my flour. I can't wait to see his face when he finds out. But how could he warn the Shire of an emergency? An emergency? In the Shire? <laughs> You've listened to one too many of your Uncle Bilbo's dragon tales. But I suppose you're right. Would you mind taking the clapper back? I'm terribly busy with his pie. Oh, very well, Fatty. But this had better be a great pie. The best! just as soon as I find some honeycomb and eggs. Then I'll show that Robin Smallbro who's a baker. Say, you wouldn't have any honeycomb handy, or some eggs. Say, you wouldn't have any Oh, thanks, Frodo. This honeycomb looks sweet indeed. There, I've rung the warning bell. Now what's going on? I don't hold with reckless bell ringing. I rang the bell. Lobelia wants you to know there are wolves in the Shire. Oh, is that all? I've heard that rumor, but I reckon no one's seen these wolves. Not even Lobelia. Oh. If any wolves approach the Shire, the Bounders will chase them off, just as they chase away foxes and such. I'm glad the Shire is well protected. Now if that's all, I've got a mug to return to in the Green Dragon. Now then, how do I start this confounded thing? Well, well, the mill wheel spins again, thanks to Frodo Baggins of all people. I'm glad it works again. You've done me a valuable service today, Baggins. Why, thank you, Ted. Good day.
These are fine eggs, Frodo. My compliments to the hen. Well, everything's in order. Now to make that pie. Good luck, Fatty. Thanks very much, Frodo. You're a good friend. Here. Thank you, Fatty. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I have a wager to win. Someone finally came to his senses and rang that bell. Now we'll have safety and order in the Shire. I do hope so. Now then, what did you want to speak to me about? Make it snappy, I have a lot of things to tend to. It's about Bag End. You said you wanted to buy it. What? But I thought you were lying, you deceitful boy. I believed that when I had the deed in my hand. Did you bring it? Here's the deed to Bag End. I can scarcely believe it! The deed to Bag End! I shall need to remove a few belongings. I'll leave the Bag End key with Master Gamgee of Number 3 Bagshot Row, if you don't mind. What? Gamgee? That dirty potato grubber and his son might plunder all of Bag End in the dead of night! Oh, why you consort with that kind, I'll never know, Frodo. Having farmers and dwarves and wizards for company, and never inviting your own flesh and blood to tea. Honestly. Good day, Lobelia. Yes, yes, a very good day indeed. My sweet little Lotho will be so happy. Bag end at last. They must be out in the fields. Too bad. They must be out in the fields. Too bad. I'm not so sure I should be doing Hello, Frodo. What took you so long? Did that sluggard Sam Gamgee forget to tell you that we'd be here? Never mind, Sam. What brings you two scoundrels all the way to Bywater? Breakfast, though we're up to lunch now. Pull up a chair. You came all this way just for breakfast? Can't tell. It's a conspiracy. Don't tell him. Oh, too late. Our conspiracy is unmasked. May as well tell him everything now. Since you'll be walking past old Maggot's farm, we thought we'd have a go at his garden again. Three is company, just like old times. Remember those mushrooms? I remember his ferocious dogs. I believe Frodo's afraid. Are you afraid, Pippin? I'm never afraid, Mary. Those dogs are all bark and no bite. Old Maggot threatened to show me their bite. Only because he caught you. Well, just be careful this time. Remember the smell of those mushrooms cooking? I do love mushrooms. Then it's settled. We'll meet you at Maggot's farm.
Will we be off to see the elves soon, Frodo? Soon, Sam. I have a few things to take care of first. I think it's time for me, and the ring, to leave Hobbiton and begin this journey. That evening, I put the ring in my pocket and made my final preparations to leave Hobbiton. All I had to do was walk to number three Bagshot Row and leave the bag end key with Gaffer Gamgee. A rider, all in black. No? Mr. Baggins has gone away. Left this morning. Why did Baggins go? Why is none of my business? Or yours? Where did Baggins go? That's no secret. He's walking to Buckleberry or some such place. Is this place far? Yes, quite a ways down the East Road. Never been so far myself. They're a strange lot in Buckland. Can you send a message? No, I can't give no message. Now, good night to you. Can't stay here long. Evening, Master Gamgee. Good evening to you, Frodo. A peculiar rider came asking after you. I don't wish to make his acquaintance. Nor me. Sent shivers up my back just to hear his hollow voice. Where's Sam? He was waiting for you. But that dreaded Pippin Took came to collect him. Said they would meet you at Maggot's Farm. Or something about a shortcut. What are they up to? They didn't say. But Pippin seemed quite pleased with himself, and Sam was none too happy about it. He better not be up to mischief. Well, here's the bag end key for Lobelia. I guess I'll meet Sam at Maggot's farm. Good evening, Master Gamgee. I'd stay clear of that rider if I were you. Now, I've nothing against the big people, but that one's trouble. You're right. I'll stay out of his way.
Get away. Stay back. Mr. Baggins, this is not the best night for a stroll, if you follow me. Yes, well, I have some urgent business, Sheriff. Would you please open the gate for me? I would like to, but one of the big people came by on horseback and fouled the inch. Well, he'd have fouled me too, if I hadn't run. This rider, was he dressed in black? Aye, from head to foot. Big black horse, too. I'll give you a hand getting this gate fixed. I'd really like to leave tonight. There are spare parts over in Sandyman's Mill. Well, I'd go, but I've my job to do. But if that rider comes back, I don't know what I'll do. This should do it, Sheriff. Aye, that it will. Nicely done, Mr. Baggins. Good luck to you. Hold on, Robin. Frodo, look out! I am in your debt. If you hadn't come along, I'd be a midnight morsel for that beast. I'm glad you're all right, Robin. We've not seen wolves for a hundred years. So I hear. It's an ill omen. What could it mean? That I'd better get going. What? Oh, <laughs> right you are, Frodo. And I should get back on patrol. Yes, but tell the other sheriffs to watch for more dangers in the Shire. Yes, of course. I'm still shaking from that beast, you know. I only became sheriff so I could walk around the country and talk to folk. If I knew it would be so dangerous, I have to go, Robin. Farewell, Frodo.
Another Dark Rider. I must stay hidden. That fallen tree ahead looks like a good place to hide. It's farm. Frodo! There he is, the old sluggard. What kept you, cousin? Stopped by the Green Dragon on your way out? Never mind why, but I can't stay. I have to leave right now for Crick Hollow. You mean Rivendell, and we're coming with you. You thought you were so clever, but our conspiracy outsmarted you. We know all about the Ring and the Dark Lord. So we're going, to protect you. But how did you know? How could we not know, with you muttering, Will I ever see that valley again? You really have the Sackville Bagginses to thank. I was practicing sneaking up on Bilbo one day, when he heard Lotho calling after him. Bilbo put on the ring and vanished. We kept our eyes open after that. We spied on you and Gandalf. Dogs! Maggot's dogs! They're coming! Rip! Fang! Wolf! Come on, lads! An old maggot, too, by the sound of it. So much for stealing some mushrooms before we go. What's all this chatter at this hour of the night? Speak up! Good evening, Mr. Maggot. Well, if it isn't Peregrine Took. You're lucky I know you. I was about to set my dogs loose. The most outlandish fellow rode through here, asking strange questions. Here. Who's that with you, Pippin? Well, you remember Meriadoc Brandybuck. Allow me to introduce Samwise Gamgee and... Uh, Frodo Baggins! Uh, good to see you again, sir. Baggins? Now, isn't that strangest of all? What do you think that stranger was asking about? He came riding up on a black horse in black cloak and hood. 
and he asked for Baggins. Oh, that would be a different Baggins. I told him all the Bagginses are in Harbiton. He says Baggins is heading east on foot. And now Frodo Baggins shows up on my farm. The same Frodo Baggins who was one of the worst young rascals around, I might add. Frodo's much better behaved these days. Where are you headed? To my new home in Crick Hollow. I can see you're in trouble, Frodo. You should never have gotten mixed up with those strange Hobbiton folk. I wager that Outlander has come for the gold Bilbo brought back from foreign parts. Well, I think it's time we were going. No, he'll be waiting. You'll ride out in my wagon, hidden from sight. Thank you, sir. And we'll send you off with a mighty dish of Mrs. Maggot's mushrooms. It's a pity I've been in terror of your dogs. I've missed a good friend. Indeed! Shall we go now? I'll ready the wagon. Farmer Maggot's wagon carried us safely away from his farm and into the borders of Buckland. But the Black Rider was still thundering along the East Road. We decided to go south and cut through the Old Forest. Mary had been in the Old Forest and knew a little of its ways. It's a dark, mysterious place, but not as dangerous as a Black Rider. Hello? Mary? Pippin? Sam? Where are you? Oi! Frodo! We're over here! <laughs> and lost by the looks of it! These trees have a mind of their own! Stay where you are! I'll find you! A broken mushroom would make a good marker. Don't want to get lost like the others. I tried not to get lost, Frodo. Honest, I did. But the trees had other ideas.
Looks like the old wives knew what they were talking about. This place is dreadful.
We'd better get moving before more of those things come for us. We'd better get moving before more of those things come for us.
Oi! Is anyone there? Help! Who's that? Ted? Ted Sandyman? Frodo! Frodo Baggins! Don't just stand there! Help me! Never thought I'd say this, but thank you. If you hadn't come along... You're welcome, Ted. Are you all right? As good as can be expected for nearly becoming supper for those things. What are you doing here? I was on my way to the village of Bree when I decided to cut through the old forest so I could laugh at those fools who believe in legends of tree men and such. But now I'm heading back to the Shire, quick as I can. Goodbye, Ted. You're not leaving the old forest? Then you're a fool! If you must forge on, you'll be needing this. It opens a gate at the edge of the forest. Mind you don't lose it. It cost me a tidy sum, I'll have you know. Lose it, and I'll expect compensation. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm taking my leave of this wretched place. Farewell, Baggins. Won't be long before supper is ready. I never thought potatoes could smell so good. A good meal will definitely ease my mind about this place. Where are we, besides in the old forest? Very close to the Withywindle Valley, but we shouldn't get any closer. Why not? The Withywindle Valley is the strangest part of the whole forest. The center from where all the strangeness comes, as it were. Can you lead us around the valley, Mary? I thought I could, but the way these trees shift about, I don't know, it's, it's like they're leading us there. Mary thought he knew his way around this forest, but how can anyone find their way when the forest won't stand still? I'm sorry I led us into such a dangerous place, but at least we've shaken off that black rider. He's galloping back and forth along the east road saying, Baggins, Baggins. We fooled him. I'm sorry I led us. He's galloping. I'm sorry. Do you know one of those trees stuck a branch out at me? Nearly tripped me, it did.
go on. Oh, must have nap. It's cool under the willows. Less flies. We can't sleep yet. We must get clear of this place. I don't like this tree. Don't trust it. Hear it singing about sleep? That's not right. Not right at all. Strange. I hear it too. Oh, feeling sleepy. What? what? That tree. It has Mary and Pippin. Sam, wake up. I don't know. Hey, doll, merry doll, bring a dong, dillo, ring a dong, hop along, fall la la willo, tum bum, jolly tum, tum bum, ba dillo. Help! Oh, steady there, little fellows. Where be you a going to, eh? Puffin' like a bellows. What's the matter then? Who. who are you? <laughs> I'm Tom Bombadil. Come now, tell me what's your trouble. My friends are caught in that willow tree. They're being squeezed. Old man Willow. I know the rhyme for him. I'll chant his marrow cold if he don't behave himself. You let them out again, old man Willow. You should not be waking. Eat earth, drink water, go to sleep. Bombadil is talking. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Very much. Well, my little fellows, you shall come to the house of Tom Bombadil. Where? Time enough for questions around the supper table. Come now and help Tom find lilies for fair Lady Goldberry. After that, we shall sit down to a table laden with cream, honeycomb, and white bread and butter. What are we waiting for? The sooner we find lilies, the sooner we can eat.
Here's another lily. I wonder who this goldberry is.
fair lilies for the fair river daughter. Come, let us go to meet her. Hey, come, dare it all, hop along my hearties, hobbits, ponies all, we are fond of parties. Now let the fun begin, let us sing together. Now let the song begin, let us sing together of sun, stars, moon and mist, rain and cloudy weather, light on the budding leaf, dew on the feather, wind on the open hill, bells on the heather, reeds by the shady pool, lilies on the water, <laughs> old Tom Bombadil and the river daughter. Come, dear folk, laugh and be merry. I am Goldberry, daughter of the river. Here's my Goldberry. You are still afraid, perhaps, of mist and tree shadows. Fear nothing, for tonight you are under the roof of Tom Bombadil. Who are you? Eh, what? Don't you know my name? It's the only answer. For who are you without your name? But you are young and I am old. Eldest, that's what I am. Tom was here before the river and the trees. Tom remembers the first raindrop, the first big people, and the first little people. He was here before kings and barrel whites, before the elves passed westward, and before the seas were bent, before the Dark Lord came from outside. His precious ring has no power over Tom Bombadil. And now, merry friends, it is time for our supper. We ate our first good meal in a long time, singing songs and telling tales until late in the night. We slept peacefully and were refreshed enough to continue our journey. Keep to the green grass as you go, lads. Don't go meddling with old stone or prying into the houses of old dead Barrowites. Here's a song to sing should you fall into any danger. Oh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, oh, by water, wood and hill, by the reed and willow, oh, by fire, sun and moon. Hearken now and hear us, come Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us. Thank you, Tom Bombadil. Speed now, fair guests. North with the wind in the left eye and a blessing on your footsteps. Make haste while the sun shines. Farewell, friends. It was a merry meeting. Thank <laughs> you. 
These platforms are a clever riddle indeed.
We are not far from the main road by my reckoning. Splendid. If we keep this pace, we'll leave the Barrow Downs by sunset tomorrow. Not soon enough for my liking. I don't trust what's hiding in the fog on the Barrow Downs. <laughs> you don't believe stories about old dead Barrow Whites? Not until today, but Tom said otherwise. Tom is the only one not affected by the ring. I wonder why. He was here before the Dark Lord came from outside. Outside what, I wonder? And whatever did he mean by eldest? And why didn't he serve bacon, or cutlets, or sausages? Sam? Mary? Pippin? Where are you? Where could they be? Sam? Mary? Anyone? Where are you? trapped in here. What is that? <laughs> Sam, Mary, wake up all of you. I've got to set them free. Get them out of here.
call for help. Ho, oh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, oh, by water, wood, and hill, by the reed and the willow, by fire, sun, and moon, hearken now and hear us. Come, Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us. Get out, old white, vanish in the sunlight, shrivel like the cold mist, till the world is bended. Out into the barren lands, far beyond the mountains, come never here again. Leave your barrow empty, lost and forgotten, be darker than the darkness, where gates stand forever shut, till the world is mended. Well, little friends, old Tom has answered your call. We can't thank you enough. Let us go out to clean grass. Thank you, Tom. The spell on this barrow lies broken, and no white shall ever come back to it. I've scattered the barrow's treasures. They're free to all finders. Old Tom has taken a pretty toy for his lady, and here are some fine blades for young hobbits who go walking into dark and danger. It's perfectly clean, untouched by time. Yes, thank you again. They were forged long ago by the men of Westerness across the sea in ancient Numenor. They cast spells on their blades for the bane of the Dark Lord. Their kings of Numenor are forgotten now, but their sons wander in loneliness, guarding simple folk from wicked things. I wonder if this blade can hurt one of the Black Riders. Old Tom shall see you safe over the borders of his land. From there you should travel to Bree, a fair village. Stay the night at the Prancing Pony Inn. Fair advice. Lead the way. We left the cold stone fields of the Barrow Downs and arrived at the hillside village of Bree, home to both hobbits and big folk. We said goodbye to Tom and entered Bree, seeking a warm fire and a door between us and the night. At last we found a cheerful inn with the sign of the Prancing Pony. We surely aren't staying in this inn, are we? Why not? Tom recommended it. I thought we might see about staying with some of the Bree Hobbits. It'd be more home-like. Oh, Sam. This is as good as an inn back home. Just a lot larger. The larger the inn, the larger the meals. Don't worry, Sam. This will be fine. Maybe Sam can find a tater patch to sleep in. I'll make arrangements with the innkeeper while you three find something to eat. And remember, from now on, my name is Mr. Underhill. Right. Come on, Sam. Pippin. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Underhill. Wonder where the innkeeper is. This seems to be his desk. Hello. I'd like to give you a word of advice, young hobbit. Oh? There are some dangerous folks about tonight. I hope you stay safe. I'm sure I will. So do I. Enjoy your stay. Hey. What do you want, fatty? Excuse me? Why don't you go stand by the fire with the rest of the children? Bill Fernie's trying to relax. Good evening to you. Pleased to meet you. My name is Underhill. Is this your first time in an inn, Mr. Underhill? No, that is to say, it's my first time in this inn. <laughs> I see. Well, if you're planning on staying here, you should check with the innkeep. Wait too long and you'll be sleeping in the stables. Right. Thank you for the advice. I still don't like the look of this place. We'll be gone soon enough, Sam. Don't worry. That is my worry, if you follow me, sir. We'll be gone. Gone for good. We should have come here long ago. Good food and excellent drink. 
Don't get too comfortable. Things could change. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Until then, I shall rest my weary feet and enjoy the local hospitality. I don't know what Sam is going on about. This is a fine inn, with a fine cook in the kitchen, I might add. Here, try the stew. Time for that meal later. I still need to arrange lodging. Oh, yes. Wouldn't want to be sleeping in the stables. Hello there. Nolly, at your service. Pleased to meet you. My name is Underhill. And how do you find Bree, Underhill? Is it to your liking? It is pleasant enough, though it isn't the Shire, or the kingdom under the mountain, I'll wager. You know of Erebor? How I miss my distant home. Soon I shall return there. Once my business in the West reaches its conclusion, I will be glad to be among my folk again. Good fortune to you, Nolly. And to you, good Underhill. May your shire be ever green and fair. It'd be right with you, sir. <laughs> Hello, I'd like to... Half a minute, if you please. Nob, where are you? With customers. Step lively. Now then, good evening, little master. Balaman Butterbur at your service. What may you be wanting? Room for four, please. You're from the Shire, from the sound here. We don't get many from the Shire nowadays. Shire. Now what does that remind me of? Might I ask your name? Mr. Underhill. Dear now, it's gone again. It'll come back to me when I have time to think. I'm run off my feet with all these travellers tonight. There's a crowd in the house tonight as there hasn't been in long years. Lucky you're a hobbit. That's the only kind of room we have left. Here's your key then. Nob! Nob, you woolly-footed slow coach! Where are you? Here, sir. Here I am. Where's Bob? Find him double sharp. He's got some ponies to stable straight away. I'll get right on it, sir. You'll excuse me, sir, but I've a party of dwarves to tend to and all these strangers coming up the greenway from the south. Busy days, these. Excuse me, Mr. Um, uh, Underhill, right? Yes. Might I have a word with you? What do you want? Pardon me, but I've heard you're travelling east. Did you know that the road is not safe for innocent folk? So I've heard. I'm heading east myself. I'm willing to travel with your party at no cost to you. I'm a very experienced guide and an excellent hunter. I can make delicious meals on the road. 
That's a generous offer. Well, then it's settled, my friend. We'll travel together. <laughs> we would appreciate the company. Excellent. Come with me. We'll discuss our travel plans. You'll fetch a fair bounty, my lad. A fair bounty indeed. What? Where am I? Whoever that man was, he's up to no good. I must escape this place at once. It was the best party ever. Fireworks that only a wizard could make. <laughs> oh, Bilbo starts a long, boring speech, but he has a trick up his sleeve. <laughs> or in his pocket. Mr. Underhill, I'd stop your friend from talking if I were you. <laughs> so Bilbo says to the 144 hobbits at the party, you are one gross of hobbits. <laughs> Everyone's so offended, they don't see his hand go into his pocket. You'd better do something quick. People of Bree, thank you for your gracious reception. <laughs> Let's have a song. And wait, 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 I'm getting to the good part. Very well then, a song. There is an inn, a merry old inn, beneath an old grey hill. And there they make us do so brown that the man in the moon himself flew down that night to eat his fill. <laughs> Where did he go? Sorcery! Bah. Conjurer's trick, that's all. <laughs> right, and a fine trick it was. What you did was worse than anything your friend could have said. It was an accident. I want a word with you somewhere quiet. Hello? Who are you? Uh, what do you want? I am called Strider, and if what I say is helpful to you, I want you to take me with you. I would not agree to any such thing until I knew a lot more about you. Excellent. You seem to be coming to your senses again after your accident. 
Begging your pardon, I need a word. Everyone in this place needs a word. I remembered what it was I forgot. What? About a shire hobbit named Baggins, but called Underhill. Who told you this? Gandalf the wizard. He asked me to send this letter to you in the shire, but I forgot. I expect he'll turn me into a block of wood. Dear Frodo, bad news. You must leave for Rivendell before the end of July. Do not wait for your birthday. I will meet you if I can, or follow you if I can't. You can trust the ranger called Strider. But make, but make sure, sure he's, he's the, the real Strider. Strider. His true name is... I am Aragorn, son of Arathorn. And if by life or death I can save you, I will. His true name is Aragorn. I thought I would have to persuade you without proof, but my looks are against me. I believed you, or I wanted to. The enemy spies look fair but feel foul, while you feel fair... But look foul? <laughs> Hold on. Where's Merry? He's still not back from his walk. Stay here. I'll find him. I don't like waiting, but I'll trust Aragorn's judgment in the matter. Hi, you! Help! What's the matter? Rats, that's the matter, and plenty of them. All down in my cellar they are, chewing up all my things. Call a rat catcher. That ain't all. There's a burglar down there, too. Burglar? A sneaky little fellow by the look of him. I saw him go in, but when I followed, I caught nipped by a rat. Hmm. Perhaps I'll have a look after all. Mind where you step, then. Cursed rats all over down there. Ain't seen the like. They call me Strider. I am a friend of Gandalf. Very well, friend. What should we do now? Return to the inn and find your friends. Tell Butterbur to lodge you in my quarters. What about you? I think it's time to throw these enemies off the scent. Beg your pardon? I'm going to collect some items to make decoys of you hobbits. You'll see. Now go. So, is my cellar free of rats? I saw that little ruffian run out, got away before I could fetch him a knock on his head, though. Your cellar is clear. Might I have some of your rags as a reward? Help yourself. No use for them since the rats tore them up anyway. Many thanks. I'd go indoors if I were you. You don't have to tell me twice. All sorts of strange wandering ruffians out and about tonight. Um, Present company accepted, of course. <laughs> of course. Good night. These rags will make my decoys more convincing.
these melons will make fine substitutes for hobbit heads. They will break convincingly in the dark. Should be hay for the decoys in the stables. Talk, you little mouse. Talk, or I'll make you squeak. I don't know, no baggins. I swear it. Little mousey's about to get his airy foot in a rat trap. Bold words for a filthy orc son of Mordor. Ah, I'll make you squeak too, wanderer. <laughs> <laughs> I owe you my life, mister. Those men from the south, they were out to kill me. Find safer quarters. There may be more of those men about. Right you are, sir. Them dirty horse stalls can wait. This hay will help fatten my little decoys. What do you want, Longshanks? None of your concern, horse thief. What? You gonna call me a horse thief? I already have. Now be gone. You've stuck your nose in the wrong place. I've seen you talking to the Shire Axe. You want the reward for Baggins all to yourself. But you won't get it. <laughs> <laughs>
What are you doing out here? That's my business. It's my business now. You'll beg to tell me after my friends work you over. These small logs will give my decoys convincing arms and legs in the dark. I doubt the gatekeeper will miss them. I should return to the Prancing Pony soon. The enemy must not find the hobbits. What a day this has been. I can barely keep my eyes open. Black Riders, I hope this plan works. You should sleep, all of you. I'll keep watch in the night. We leave at dawn. Where will we go? Toward Rivendell. But not by the main road. Ah, I should have known. More shortcuts and long delays. The last time we tried that, we were almost eaten by a tree. My shortcuts don't go wrong. the next morning, I led the four hobbits safely out of Bree and into the troll-haunted wilderness beyond. We approached the hill that the elves call Amon Sul and that men call Weathertop. Strider, what's that light? I'm not certain. It's too distant to make out. But it appears to be coming from Weathertop. It's like lightning. We'll know more once we reach Weathertop.
here we are, cold, windy, and besieged by trolls. And no sign of Gandalf either. You haven't looked with a ranger's eyes. See that cairnstone? There are runes on it. What do they say? It appears to be a G and a three. G for Gandalf. And the three might mean a date. October 3rd was not long ago. Gandalf was here. If he was, he left in a hurry. Perhaps he ran into trolls. Or worse. Black Riders, moving along the road below. The Ringwraiths of Mordor. We must move on, quickly. We're running out of food. Our supply won't last until Rivendell. I can hunt and find food in the wilderness. Roots and berries. Hmm, what an exciting meal. Blech. Tighten your belt and think of feasting at Elrond's table at Rivendell. Rivendell. I'll see elves at last. Just us, Frodo. The riders have gone. You're safe. For now, the Ringwraiths are waiting for Frodo to succumb to his wound before they attack again. What do you mean? That knife in the dark. Its wound is overcoming him, turning him into a lesser wraith. I can't heal him, but I can slow the darkness growing within him. How? I need a healing plant called Athelus, which comes from the ancient land of Numenor. You may know it as King's Foil. I believe it grows wild in this area. The Black Riders are hiding, waiting for their Morgul knife to overcome Frodo. But Frodo's resistance is strong. We must fly to Rivendell. I'll move as best I can. Take heart, Frodo. We will do this together. Ah! <laughs> 
Rider approaches. So I see. I na vedui do na dan. My govan and melon. What did he just say? Well met, friend. Or at least I think so. This is Glorfindel of the House of Elrond in Rivendell. Hail and well met at last. We were told to look for you by Gandalf. No. Elrond received news of you from elves traveling near the Shire. As soon as he learned things were amiss, he sent out riders in all directions. Here. Frodo has a Morgul wound. He must get to Rivendell. Then he shall ride my horse, Asphaloth. His pace is smooth, and he'll let no rider fall from his back. Fly! The enemy is upon us! Fly to the ford! Ride on! Norolim! Norolim, Asphaloth! Neither the ring, nor me! At Elrond's command, the waters of the River Bruinen swept the Ringwraiths away. We entered the hidden elven valley of Rivendell. Elrond, the Lord of Rivendell, healed the wound made by the Morgul blade. Frodo awoke to a familiar face. Gandalf. Yes, I am here. And you are lucky to be anywhere, after all the absurd things you've done. Then we made it. But we needed you, Gandalf. I was held captive by the treachery of Saruman the White, the chief of the wizards. But now I am free, and astonished that you brought the ring all this way. Hobbits seem especially resistant to the evil of the ring. Thank you for sending Aragorn. I didn't know he could fight ring wraiths. I thought he was only a ranger. Only a ranger? My dear Frodo, rangers are the last remnant of the kings of ancient Numenor. But now your part in the quest of Mount Doom is complete. You shall hear all about it in many meetings. You are to be the guest at the Council of Elrond.
My friends, this is the Hobbit, Frodo, son of Drogo. He has sacrificed much to bring the One Ring to Rivendell. Frodo, these are leaders of the free peoples of Middle-earth. Gimli, son of Glawin of the Dwarf Kingdom of Erebor, where the Dark Lord Sauron threatens invasion. Legolas, son of Thrandul, King of the Wood Elves. They fight Sauron's forces in Mukwood Forest. Boromir, son of the Steward of Gondor. The men of Gondor suffer great losses to protect us all from Sauron's armies. Sauron's power is tied to this ring. We must carry it deep into Mordor and destroy it in the fires of Mount Doom. Destroy it? You would deliver our greatest weapon right to the doorstep of our enemy? We cannot use it. It corrupts all who bear it. The more powerful the bearer, the more dangerous they will become. I fear to take the ring to hide it. I will not take the ring to wield it. A dark riddle. Those powerful enough to enter Mordor dare not touch the ring. Powerful enough to enter Mordor? All the armies of Middle-earth joined together could not enter Mordor! A small force with stealth may succeed where a large army would fail. Elves have tried to join with dwarves against Sauron. But the dwarves prefer to hide in their dark caves counting their treasures. At least dwarves are not fleeing Middle-earth. But elves are sailing away to the safety of the West during our darkest hour. Enough. I say we use the ring as a weapon. For none of you is powerful enough to bear the ring to Mordor. I will take the ring. Though I do not know the way. I think this task has been appointed for you, Frodo. If you do not find the way, no one will. You won't send him alone? No, indeed, since it is not possible to separate you from him, Sam Gamgee. Gandalf shall lead a fellowship of free people against Sauron. Nine walkers against Sauron and his nine riders. Legolas shall be for the elves and Gimli for the dwarves. For men, there shall be Aragorn and Boromir of Gondor. For the remaining two, I shall call for great heroes, like... Merry and Pippin! Hobbits are free people, too! You cannot begin to imagine the danger ahead. Neither can Frodo, and neither can I. Even the greatest lords of the elves could not force open a passage through Mordor. I would rather trust Hobbit friendship than ancient power. Very well, then. The Fellowship of the Ring shall set forth to Mordor. I plan on studying Master Elrond's maps and books while we're here. There's plenty to learn. Elrond is lucky he let Mary and I come along. We were plotting another conspiracy, in case they didn't let us go. It'll be good to have such company on our journey, Frodo. When you saw fire and lightning on Weathertop, you saw the effects of my battle with the Ringwraiths. Had I been three days later, I would have met you. I came to Rivendell seeking answers about a dream. A vision that said the Halfling shall stand forth. Are you that Halfling? This mission is so great, and you are so small. Renewed shall be the blade that was broken. The crownless again shall be king. The elven smiths have reforged Narsil, the blade of my ancestors. You have done me a great honor. You do us honor to carry it against our common enemy, Aragorn, son of Arathorn, son of the kings of Numenor. It shall have a new name, Anduril, Flame of the West. May it see the end of the Dark Lord, and then see you safely back to me, my love. You have my thanks, Arwen Andumiel, and my love. My Govanan Melon. Well met to you as well, friend. Your path will be an arduous one, Mingbearer. May the stars shine upon your face. Elrond chose your companions well, Frodo. We shall not fail you.
Hello, Bilbo. It looks like we'll be going soon. I wanted to stop by and say goodbye. There you are, Frodo, my lad. I've some gifts for you, for use on the road ahead. First, there is Sting, the blade of an elven prince. You'll need it, I wager. This is a mithril shirt from the Dragon Treasure. Very light, but stronger than any steel. Thank you for all you have done to help me. Help you? I've brought a terrible doom upon you. As you once said, the old that is strong does not wither. You should heed your own words. Ah, yes. Take care of yourself, Frodo, and bring back all the news you can. I'm writing a book about your adventure. Merlon. We have learned that the strange creature called Gollum told the Dark Lord that Baggins of the Shire took the ring. Gollum was held captive by the Wood Elves, but he escaped. He is still seeking the ring. Glory at your service. The Dark Lord Sauron sent messengers to the Dwarf King, seeking your uncle Bilbo. The agents of Mordor knew that Bilbo was with dwarves when he found the ring. They threatened us, and offered us much gold if we helped them find Bilbo and the ring. But we sent them packing. We will go to war with Mordor before we betray the hobbits. My father, Chloe, traveled with your uncle Bilbo years ago. The dwarves of Lonely Mountain still revere Bilbo, along with our greatest heroes. His bravery helped win back our mountain home from the dragon, Smaug. A most honorable hobbit is Bilbo Baggins. Well, here we are. A fellowship of eight? Where is Strider? Here, Sam. Don't worry, I'm with you still. The fellowship is ready, Elrond. Elven scouts have cleared away nearby servants of the enemy. The ring goes south in safety to our borders. The ring bearer must not cast away the ring, nor allow it to fall into the hands of the enemy. The others go with him as free companions. No oath or bond is laid upon you to go no further than you will. Faithless is he that says farewell when the road darkens. Gandalf shall lead you now. May the blessings of all the free folk go with you. It was December when we set forth on the road to Mordor, traveling through the ancient land of Holland. We were beset on all sides by Sauron's power, for birds and beasts and even weather could be bent to the wheel of Sauron. The Dark Lord hurled a raging snowstorm as we tried to cross the great mountain Carathras. We forged on, 
until an avalanche forced us to quit the mountain and seek another path. Barathros has defeated us. Should we turn back? There is no safety for the ring in Rivendell. Where do we go? There is another path, the Mines of Moria. That is a name of ill omen. But in Gondor, we will have strong allies. The enemy expects that, so the ring must not go near Gondor. I shall follow you to Moria, and look upon the great underground city of khazad dûm I will go, but I say to you all, beware the secrets of Moria. I will not go, unless the vote of the whole company is against me. The ring bearer's voice should be heard. I do not wish to go, but I do not wish to forsake the Council of Gandalf either. Gandalf, did you hear that? The Hounds of Sauron are upon us. Make ready. <laughs> We must reach Moria, and soon. Gandalf speaks true. Our troubles may get worse, and sooner than we'd like. What remains of this path should lead us to the Holland Gates and Moria beyond? A good amount of force will dislodge. It'll take, it'll take, it'll take more than a blow. It'll take more than a blow from Glamdring to dislodge these stones.
We have come to the west gate of Moria. Here the elven land of Holland ended. There is a gate here? Dwarf doors are not made to be seen when shut. Behold. What does the writing say? It reads, The doors of Durin, Lord of Moria. Speak, friend, and enter. What does it mean, speak, friend, and enter? If you are a friend, speak the password to open the doors. Do you know the word, Gandalf? If I am allowed a bit of peace, I shall seek for the word. Beast weakens! Stand fast! has been stunned. Now is the chance to open the doors. <laughs> the password is the elvish word for friend. Melon.
let us rest while we can. How long will it take to get through this place? I cannot say for certain. Three or four days march, providing we don't get lost or run into trouble. Trouble? Uh, what kind of trouble? Orc trouble. Moria is vast and deep. With luck, we can avoid all the orcs. Our luck seems to be running sour of late. Perhaps you would have preferred to remain behind with that thing in the lake? Not me, Mr. Gimli. I'll take my chances in here.
This lift is functional, though how the orcs maintained it, I do not know.
The hobbits need rest, Gandalf. This seems like a sound place to camp. I agree. This is as good a place as any nearby. Very well, Gimli. We shall camp here, but not for long. Orcs are on the prowl. I'm not certain, but I think something is following us. Quietly. In the dark. I'm keeping an eye on Sting. When it glows, the orcs are near. Nothing grows in here but foul slimes. What's a home without a garden? The orcs will rue the day they fouled this place. I fear we can't avoid the orcs forever. We have to be ready.
We must free him from the orcs. It is Ori, friend of my father and hero of Erebor. The Ori who traveled with Bilbo? The same. You honor me, son of Gloin, and Gandalf, my old friend. Rest, Ori. Your wounds are most grievous. Have the sons of Durin come to seek revenge? Are you here with an army of dwarves? Alas, no. Only the nine of us. Then I must help you. What do you mean? Seek. In the chamber of Masabul. There you shall find the great axe of Durin. Durin's axe? It was long thought lost to us. You must deliver it to our people. Ori, be strong. Stay with us. Right. The face of Durin leads the way. <laughs> He is gone. He shall be avenged. So swears Gimli, son of Gloin.
Stay away from that well, though. Who knows what is swimming around down there, looking for a meal? Well, you're a small catch, Sam. It would probably throw you back. Pippin, that's not a... good idea. Fool of a took. Throw yourself in next time, and we'll be done with you. Listen, what's that sound? It sounds like a hammer. Someone down there is sending signals. We'll need to move on, and soon, before the orcs come. Three passages to choose from. draws near. Soon the mines of Moria will be safely behind us. I hope you're right. As do I. I grow weary of this place. It is so cold and dark. Where are we exactly, Mr. Gandalf? I believe we're in the upper halls. Perhaps the 20th or 21st. They've been well looted and of little interest to the orcs. They prefer the lower levels, despite the shadow of fear that covers them. Uh, fear of what? Durin's Bane, a dark creature unleashed long ago by dwarves seeking Mithril. They delve too greedily and too deep. Enough talk of the past. It is the present that concerns me. Do we rest or move on? We will rest. It is as safe a place as any. Tomorrow we shall forge on.
all of Bag End in one chamber here and have room left over. I think I like this part better than those mine tunnels. I can't help feeling that we're being followed. I'd have never thought a place so huge would be built by dwarves. I long to be among the trees, to breathe fresh air, to see the sky. Let us hope no orcs come to visit while we sleep in this vast hole. Oh. Let us hope no orcs... The Bridge of Durin is near. With luck, we shall cross it without incident.
And thus, the light shines upon the face of Durin, father of all dwarves. A new path lies before us. Let us explore it. This place bears investigation. Old secrets may be revealed within. The book is a record of Balin's time in Moria. I fear the tidings are grim indeed. They met with early fortune, driving out a host of goblins. Then they discovered Mithril, the riches of Moria. 
It goes on to tell of Balin's death, an attack by orcs. Slowly but surely, the dwarves were driven back and trapped. They made their last stand here. The effort to retake Moria was valiant, but foolish. We should be moving on. A cave troll! Stand fast! For the Shire! This place, a great darkness approaches. The orcs won't let us leave without a fight. Oh! Ah! Ah! 
is clear.
A Balrog! Durin's bane has come! To arms, Gondor! Go! This is a foe beyond any of you. I must face the Balrog alone. We forged on, out of the dark depths of Moria, and soon we reached the Golden Wood, Lothlorien. I have not been here for many long years, but I remember the way to Karaskalothan, Tree City of the Elves. Elves! Be at ease. I am Haldir of Lorien. I have been following you for some time. You breathe so loud I could shoot you in the dark. Ah! Have no fear. The Lady Galadriel is expecting you. But the Dwarf is not permitted on our land. But Elrond chose him. He's brave and faithful. Very well. But he must travel blindfolded. I am no spy. I will not walk blind like a prisoner. My people do not serve the enemy. This is our law. I will go forward free. A plague on dwarves and their stiff necks. Hold. We will all go blindfolded. Ha ha ha! A merry troop of fools we shall look. I will be content if Legolas shares my blindness. But I am an elf. I am a kinsman here. Shall we say a plague on elves and their stiff necks? The company shall all fare alike. Bind us all, Haldir. So be it. I shall lead you safely to Karos Galothan, where Lord Celeborn and Lady Galadriel await you. Here there are eight, yet nine left Rivendell, or so the message said. Gandalf the Grey set out with your company. Where is he now? Alas, lady, Gandalf fell into shadow. He did not escape Moria. In all the long years full of grievous tidings, these are the most evil. When escape seemed beyond us, he saved us, and he fell. We will hear the tale another day, for you are weary and heartsick. We will do what we can to help you. Especially the one who bears the burden. Your quest stands upon the edge of a knife. Stray even a little, and it will fail, to the ruin of all. Yet, 
Hope remains while all the Fellowship is true. Rest, and we will not speak of the road ahead for a while. Here is the mirror of Galadriel. I have brought you here to look in it, if you will. What will we see? Things you desire to see, and things unbidden. Things that were, are, and may yet be. I'll have a peek. There's only stars. Wait, what? It's Ted Sandyman. Cutting down all our trees! I'll cut him down! Oh, devilry! They've dug up Bagshot Row! They've run off my old gaffer! I have to go to the Shire! Would you turn from Frodo's quest? Uh, no. Do you wish to look now, Frodo? I will look. I see a land in shadows, and an old man walking toward me. Gandalf? No. White robes. Saruman? And there's Bilbo. He seems worried. But about what? There's the sea. A tall ship from the west. And a white fortress. With seven towers. Another ship. With black sails. And the emblem of a white tree. I see a great battle. And an eye. Ringed with fire. I know what you saw for it is in my mind as well. But the enemy cannot hurt you here. This land is not preserved merely by singing or arrows. Behold, Nenya, the Ring of Adamant, a ring Sauron cannot rule, unless you fail and he gains the ring. We would be laid bare before him. Yet, if you succeed, my power will diminish and Lothlorien will fade. Which do you choose, lady? My love for my people is deeper than the sea, yet I would cast it all away rather than submit to Sauron. I wish you to destroy the ring. I would give you the ring if you ask for it. You would give me the ring freely? In place of the Dark Lord, you would set up a queen. And I shall not be dark, but beautiful and terrible as the morning and the night. All shall love me and despair. No, I pass the test. I will diminish and go into the west. And remain Galadriel. Lady Galadriel, you wear one of the rings of power. When I wear the one ring, why can't I see into your mind or the minds of others? Because you have not tried. But I warn you not to. You would have to become far stronger and train your will to the domination of others. And then you would lose the one virtue that makes you more able to resist the ring than any of the wise and powerful. We will not speak more of it. Let us go. The next day we said farewell to Lorien. Celeborn and Galadriel gave us boats of elven make, and we set out on the great river Anduin toward Mordor. Aragorn has been gone for some time. I hope his scouting goes well. It is not Aragorn that concerns me, but you. You have a difficult path ahead. Yes. I know what I should do, but I'm afraid of doing it. And yet, do you suffer needlessly? I know you wish me to bear the ring to Gondor, and it seems like wisdom, except for the warning in my heart. What warning is that? A warning against the easy path. 
against the refusal of my burden, and if it must be said, against trust in the strength and truth of the big people of the world. Our strength has long protected your little shire. I do not doubt the valor of Gondor, but what if it is not enough? There is still hope that Gondor will not fall. There is no hope while the ring exists. Yes, the ring. We can use its power for good. All that is done with the ring turns to evil. All can be corrupted. Some faster than others. Frodo, Boromir, make ready. The orcs have built fortifications. What would you have us do? Wake the others and prepare to move out. Stealth may not serve us here. We may have to fight. These evil creatures may try to march further north, but the Elves of Lorien will stop them. Oh, the Shire seems so far away. I knew the world was big, but not this big. I have a feeling we're being followed, but by what? I must say, travel by boat is not to my liking. These elven boats are a wonder. I've never seen the like. Think of my counsel, Frodo. It is all I ask of you. Think of my cup. The sooner we reach Anduin's end, the better. I care not for the number of goblins I have seen.
The switch won't work without a lever. What's this? Something stirs. Where is it? The precious. Gollum, stop where you stand, creature. Ranger, it will hurt us, it will. Do not hurt us. Please, not little Smeagol. Be still and you won't be hurt. Why are you here? Take two. Here to give presences. Yes. Um, presences. Presents? Speak clearly. Presences. For rangers. Yes. Presences. The ranger! Come here, you! Ox! Come to hurt them, precious. Come to hurt them now! shall pursue the Nazgul. This is my fault. That ringwraith mistook Sam for me. I must make amends. No, Frodo! We must distract the creature while they rescue our comrade. Baruch Khazad! To battle! Thank you. 
Sam! Are you all right? Well enough to get out of here, and there's no mistake. I thought I was that thing's supper! We must be swift, friends. That winged Nazgul will soon be upon us. Let the Ringbearer seek safety. It is time for Anduril to strike! Elbereth Gilthoniel! Fellowship of the Ring has triumphed. They have brought low the flying ring wraith. They have taken Frodo in safety to the very edge of Morgdor. So the Fellowship has succeeded. Yet I see the ring bearer alone as he crosses into the dark land. Yet, not all alone. <laughs> 